ISA are done. I've beat Grundy. And Cindy Berman probably got crushed when the dish caved in. Uh, Mike, my question is first to you, because your character is starting to be the main villain for the second mm -hmm. season. Everything that is uh, coming up is because of her. And right. I'm curious, how did you like this approach to your character that now she's in charge? Oh, I mean, it's been a countdown ever since the end of season one. It's, it's, it's absolutely incredible to like kind of call the shots for a second. She's kind of been um, always second, you know, with her dad's situation last season and kind of getting a little like beat up and locked up and, and uh, forgotten a little bit. It's kind of nice to finally be in the forefront and be in charge and pick a team and find a family and um, tell people what to do a little bit. <laughs> You said find a family. Is it really for her, those people that she's gathering, gathering a family or a minions that's supposed to do whatever she pleases? It's, 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 it's minion-y. I mean, she has this struggle with family. Obviously, we know this um, back at home. She wants a team. You know, she wants people to be around her, to listen to her, also kind of, you know, help. Um And her relationship with Eclipso is changing all the time and she's learning about it, not realizing, you know, she is kind of being manipulated. So she wants to, um, she wants to be the leader and they are very, they are minion -y, but it would be nice if they were actually like caring <laughs> about <laughs> all the things that they want to get done. Um, so it's a kind of like back and forth. And Angelica, for, for your You have also those uh, um, parents issues in this uh, season and you're abandoned. Like you're one of the few characters that actually lost her powers because the goggles without your friend are only some information goggles. Like you have, I don't know, Facebook glasses that they shown right now that can only scoop whatever it's on um, before her. Were you a little bit, I don't know, scared what will happen to this character without those superpowers um no actually i wasn't super scared because i think the goggles are still really valuable even though they just have like you said it's kind of just like a a computer right that you have here that there's no like ai so she's missing chuck it's not the same as it used to be um so i wasn't too worried about that i was more so worried about how Beth was going to handle her parents' divorce and how she was going to handle, you know, not being around Chuck and not having him be her best friend because that's what he became after season one until Icicle basically murdered him in my goggles. So um, I wasn't too worried about that, but um, as far as like her superpowers go, I still think that the goggles are very valuable. Because when I'm looking on the arc of your character, I think that she's the weakest link of, of the group only because oh. only because uh, when she lost Chuck, she actually lost her, her self-confidence that without him, she cannot do most of the things that she was uh, doing in the first season. And we can see that she's a little bit lost. And that's why I said she's the weakest link because she doesn't believe in herself as much as her colleagues. I think that um, other characters in the JSA often don't believe in themselves equally. I just think that with Beth, she had guidance, whereas everyone else didn't need that. So because that she didn't, because the rest of them didn't really need that specific guidance, but Beth really did. And she's so eager to be a part of the JSA. Um, I think that her just desire to want to be there is fairly similar to Courtney's because Courtney loves being a superhero. Like she loves being star girl. And I think Beth loves being Dr. Midnight so much as well. And so it really makes her, um, excited to be there. But as far as being lost, I think that they're all pretty lost just because they're teenagers and they're superheroes and they don't really know what they're actually doing. And they're always getting into like crazy chaos. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm really, I, I love Beth. I, I, I don't think she's, she's weak at all. I think that Beth is a very strong character. I think if I was 16 years old and I lost my best friend and was also dealing with my parents divorcing and my team having a bunch of drama and fighting crazy villains, I think I would be equally as lost. So 
I didn't ever say that she's weak. I said only that she's the weakest link in the in this uh, in this part of the season. Because as I said, she she was lost, and she we can see in the I think it was in five in the fifth episode when mm-hmm. they're fighting with the um, with the paint guy. I don't know how to to translate it in English, and we could mm-hmm. see that she didn't know what to do when the goggles were in uh, in the paint. That's why I, I assume that. The, for her it was uh, strangling and uh, also do you wait for the moment that your character will be more physical not only the brains of the action but also some of the fists because i know that it can happen for her i i look forward to that day whenever that day does come however i don't think it's coming it's coming (laughs) i look forward to that day when it does come um nobody's told me anything so i would love for that day to come that would be really really fun um but for now i'm really enjoying eating fries and not having to do anything so (laughs) oh that's how it is (laughs) I remember, I remember Angelica, we had an, an, an interview and they asked us like, who do you, who would you be on the JSA? And I remember saying, I was like, I want to be Dr. Midnight because you have so, so much information. You could just sit there, tell them what to do. You see things this is that true. no one else sees and yeah. you can orchestrate the whole group. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a perfect match. Like everyone has their, their place on the team and everything together. If you guys are, you know, solidified you know together you know has have each other's back like kind of right. how this episode six is gonna go um it's perfect like <laughs> you don't need to do anything else i'm excited for okay. you to see episode six and and then hear your thoughts on what you think after exactly. tonight's episode it's like no, it's, it's like one of our favorite episodes Oh, it's tomorrow. Okay, well, yeah, it's tomorrow because tomorrow we have this this one one day delay because first oh. it's in the United States, then it's in Europe. I, Meg, I I have to ask you about also because your character is very physical in in this in this show, and the preparation to that and the timing of all the fights. How was it when you first started in this in this TV series? Did you go with those? Uh, those this choreography without any doubts or it was hard in the beginning because in the second season I can see that you don't have any problems with it <laughs> um I mean I was definitely nervous to do it I've never done stunts before but our stunt team is absolutely incredible they're very patient with their actors they you know they take their time Lauren Kim was my stunt double last year and we would meet up you know like a few times a week, I would come to set even if I wasn't working and we just practice. There was a lot of sequences. Um, uh, Shiv, she, it, her fighting, it's a martial art um, called Kali that originates in the Philippines. And um, I'm actually half Filipino, so it was kind of like ironic. Um, but she would, yeah, we would just, just go over it over and over and over and over again. Sometimes you learn things on the day um, just because they don't have time to teach or like it changes or something like that. Um, but you have to 100% go all in. If you kind of half, half fast it a little bit, it, you look funny. So um, I learned that for sure. <laughs> and so season two was, uh, I was slightly more confident and it was fun. And I, since I don't have a mask on, a lot of the times they do have to use me for a few, for, you know, for a fair amount of stunts, but the the real stuff that is that is a stunt girl. <laughs> yeah, I can shame. imagine. And, and you're a scary person when you look at your character. I'm going <laughs> sometimes afraid of her. And I know. I'm pretty yeah. sure that after two seasons you can kick anybody's ass <laughs> with this with the preparation that you guys get over there. <laughs> It's very fun. And tell me, Gareth, I wear you uh, comic fans before that did you know about those characters before or you knew only the basics like batman superman from the dc universe i only knew the basics i i, I did not follow um anything <laughs> but it was so fun to jump in because the world is so vast and it just goes on forever um also having jeff on set too you can just ask him anything and he knows it all <laughs> this is yeah, true. i heard it I heard that he's a walking encyclopedia of uh, DC Universe. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. And for me as well, I only really knew the basics. Um, 
a couple of my brothers are really huge into just the comic book world in general, whether it be the DC universe, Marvel universe, whatever. So one of my brothers actually had a really thick, um, like DC superhero, the dictionary, I want to say it's similar to that, that has like every DC comic character ever. Um, and when we auditioned, I obviously had no idea I was auditioning for Beth Chapel, Dr. Midnight. Um, but once they told me that that's who, who I just booked, I was like, Oh, that's who that is. Um, I went and looked her up. Like, obviously I did a lot of work online and then I was able to actually find her in my brother's like dictionary thing that has been in our house for years. So it's so crazy. crazy. Yeah. So crazy that like, she was just like in there with, uh, and also the original Dr. Midnight as well. And yeah. So how did they react when you said you will be in this world? Like you will be the part of DC universe. Cause as we, far as we know, those all shows are connected. I know that there are different eras and we can probably talk about it for hours, but they are one universe. You can jump probably to Flash or Superman in an instant. And we actually, in one of the shows, we saw that they are crossing. So how did they react when you said, I'm the part of it right now? Uh, my brothers were like, really? Are you <laughs> Is it you or like, who is it? Like what? I don't think they really understood that it was also going to be live action. I, don't, I think for some reason, one thought it was literally animated. And I'm like, why would I, since when, when since when have I been doing that? Um, but yeah, my family thinks it's really cool, I think. But you know what? My nephews, I have two five-year-old nephews and two six-year-old nephews, and they think I'm way cooler than anyone else in my family. It's like, they're like, they watch the show, they're in it, they love everything superheroes, but you know, I mean, they're five and six and not that you can't as an adult, but they're like in fully invested. And so they think I'm like way cooler. Everyone else, my parents are like, whatever, calm down. But you know, the boy is so a little-, a little I can baby. imagine that in the, in the Christmas time, it's like, screw the Santa Claus. Our aunt is Dr. Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, but they're mainly just like, so is Stargirl coming? Is <laughs> like, it's Shiv? Like, where's Wildcat? Like, they're at that age where they actually can't fully separate that I am an actor and it's a TV show. They're kind of just like my auntie Angelica Beth, Dr. Midnight. Like, they think I'm all just like one, which I am, but like, you know, they have it. That's so beautiful. They That's realize so cute. Come on. You it I would is really cute. like to, in, in, to be in this day and age that I can actually <laughs> believe in those all things, you know? Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's cute, you know? It is really cute. It is I really missed cute. One, I miss when I thought that um, my, my favorite actor was actually that. <laughs> 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 my favorite character was actually that character, and they exist and live in the world. Right. I wish I could go back. Me too. And be like, they're real. Lizzie McGuire is here and yeah. she's mm-hmm. there. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and guys, also, I want to ask you because when you take part in the comic movie or TV series, it comes with a big pressure of the fandom. Because as you probably know, everybody that is reading comics have some opinion about it. They, they watch every episode and then they're reacting on it. So I'm curious. How did you react after the first season when you see how many fans this this TV series has? I mean, um, I I was I wasn't I'm not, not saying overwhelmed, but it was a lot. I was like, whoa, this is like I could study this for months, and um, but I also kind of enjoyed being like having a new set of eyes on this world and allowing myself to kind of just gather information as we go and also asking fans like let's talk about this like what do you know that I don't I play this and how can we kind of like collaborate and you could teach me things it was kind of fun because I mean we're actors and we we play different roles all the time and it's it's you don't know everything, you know, it's kind of, it was, it was, it started a nice conversation between the fans. And I guess I, I don't know. What do you think, Ange? Um, I think I was very excited by how many people were watching the show when I, we were getting our ratings coming in. I was like, Oh, this is great. Like people are watching it. Um, I will say though, I live in LA where 
<laughs> it's like everyone here is an actor. So everyone's on some type of show of some sort. So um, I don't really get that stopped. But actually, last week, I went to seeing Shang-Chi, the new Marvel film. Yeah. And I was so excited. I went on um, like Thursday. It was like the opening night or something like that. And I got stopped for the first time ever in L.A., and they were like, oh, my gosh, are you Angelica Washington, who's Beth Chapel?" And I was like, oh, I am. I am. Because I just feel like in L.A., like nobody stops you because either they don't care or they don't think your show is big enough or like they're not. Everyone's here does it. So they're just like, it's whatever. But that was very, very special for me because I was like in a Marvel superhero movie, like leaving the theater and then like got stopped. But and they were just like superhero fans were like, we watch everything. We watch your show. We love it. That to me was so cool because um, that never happens. So, yeah, it was really cool. But I think overall, I'm really excited by um the love and support that people watch our show. It just makes me really excited. Yeah, because it's something new when you compare it to, to Flash or to uh, Arrow, that mm -hmm. is something in a different genre, I think. It's like 70s, 80s, uh, coming mm -hmm. up with the, with the 21st century. But coming up to the second season, what will happen to your characters? Like Meg... Will your character destroy everything or she will go to the good side? Because I can feel that, and what our interview started it, you are, your character is looking for some appreciation. She's looking for some people that will have her back. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, will she stay in the, on the dark side or she will change because the true friends could be on the other side? Mm -hmm. Um as much as I can say before everything rolls out this month. I mean, I, I there's, she has potential. She has potential to become, you know, a little better, a little more good, but uh, I think she needs to get out of her own way first. Um, so she has some lessons to learn before that is even a possibility. But right now she's like gung ho wants to mess everything up wants to hurt Courtney, wants to take advantage, wants to, you know, just punch everything. So no, no, no. She wants to cut everything. She wants to shit everything. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, maybe. <laughs> because because I can see that she's hooked on the power that she got from the stone. Like yes. uh, she likes which is kind of she's in good, power though. for she's, this for, for this moment. She's brainwashed. She's a little brainwashed right now with the the power of the sun she's a little like oh like like power power hungry right now so um that's dangerous though because eclipso knows exactly what he's doing of she course, but I, I think that she's she's thinking that she is in command and yes. i think that yes. this is the, the the worst thing that could happen to her that uh, in one point she will realize that she is only a weapon in somebody else's hands yeah Exactly. And Angelica, how do you want your character to evolve? Because we could see that she has some connection with the real you know, Dr. Midnight that is somewhere over there, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe it's only a production. We don't know. But she's starting to be this, this bridge before two war, between two worlds. Mm -hmm. She definitely thinks she has found the real Dr. Midnight. Um, and as the series progresses we'll find out if she did or if she didn't um but i actually have a really great episode coming up in episode eight where we get to see a lot of um beth's challenges and growth and um we just kind of like get to see her in her world on her own figuring things out so i'm very excited for everyone to see episode eight and i think that, that episode will help answer a lot of the questions you're looking for Because I can see right now that she wants to be uh, helpful for the for the uh, for the group. She wants to mm -hmm. be needed be, be, uh, of them. Right. That that she cannot be how to say it uh, replaced by anyone. That she wants to be the one of the few that actually belongs to this group. And we mm -hmm. could see through 
five episodes of the second season that there are many of characters that want to jump on this ship that wants to be the part of the JSA and uh, the places are limited so I can see that she's struggling not to be pushed off yeah um she's definitely struggling I don't um I don't think she's really contemplating her place in the JSA I don't know if they would ever be so mean to kick her out because I think that uh, Stargirl also finds the goggles valuable regardless if Chuck is in them or not. But I think that they care about Chuck because Beth cares about Chuck and they care about Beth. So I think that's why Chuck is important to everyone just simply because it's important to Beth and they love her. Um, But yeah, I think, I think you will, you will see a lot of character development from Beth Chapel this season. And I'm very excited about that. Because I, I'm bringing it up because watching it, and that's why I like those characters so much. We can see that they all have flaws. And yeah. I think that Stargirl, you said that she's not so mean, but I think that in many ways, she's very selfish. Like she wants to sure. be the, the superhero and the other people are there to help her. But otherwise, she will do everything by herself and she doesn't need anybody's help, even if she needs it. And I Is think it- that... The- Mm -hmm. I was going to say this is true. I think that she definitely has moments where um, she can be pretty selfish, but she learns her lessons, too. She had a few of those lessons in season one where she realized, oh, I actually need a team. Um, And I think that that's just going to be a continuous lesson that the entire team is going to get, especially as they, you know, I'm assuming as seasons go on, they might try to embark things on their own. And so we'll see how that goes. And I'm I really looking is... forward to to seeing Rick Rick and Beth's relationship. Like mm. you guys are finding like a really nice groove and like trust within each other on the show as characters. And I thought I, I thought I, 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 there was a scene you guys had together. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank yeah, you. I wanted to, I wanted to say that the, this is the something that connects the uh, Star Girl to Shiv because I think they both are very selfish in 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 those kinds of way and using mm-hmm. the group only to um, to achieve their goal to right. want to be a hero, want to build a villain, but they want to do everything by themselves. And even if they are trying to say I care about you guys, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, Stargirl and Shiv are definitely um, parallels. They're very similar. I think that's the whole reason why I even see Stargirl as a threat. Shiv see- sees Stargirl as a threat because she sees the potential and what type of leader. And it's a, you know, it's, it reminds her of herself. It's just the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the only uh, different thing about them is the parenthood, actually, the people that raised them. Because uh, on the yeah. character wise, I think they're pretty the same. Like right. they have they have the same approach to the world. Like it's in mm-hmm. our hand. But mm-hmm. uh, Stargirl has a mother, and uh, she, I think, lost everyone in the yeah in the in the early beginning of the stage. So, know, and it's girl. it's actually a very nice sentence in the five in the fifth episode when uh, one character approach Shiv and says that uh, the thing that I cannot. Uh, the the thing that I will remember for all times is what you said on the grave on your mother that I never mm-hmm. liked her, and mm-hmm. I I think that it was deep and it was uh, very sadly for this character and I could see on the face that it hurts her that oh, somebody absolutely. is bringing it up. She was deflecting. I don't think she actually thought that, but she's just like I have to be hard. I have to be tough because that's how I was taught, and I'm alone. <laughs> so sad. So sad, so fun, so sad. 